In this video, I'm going to teach you how to graph the sine function. Now, before we get started with the graphing, you need a little background information, and I sure hope you already know this. It seems like you would if you were shooting for graphing the sine function. That reminder is just about SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA is that phrase or that um, acronym that we use to remind us about the sine, the cosine, and the tangent relationships to a right triangle. Here's a quickie for a reminder. In a right triangle, you have to have a right angle, obviously, and the side that's across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The other two sides are the legs of the right triangle, but they are given specific names based on the location of a, an angle that you're looking at other than the right angle. So if we happen to be looking at this angle right here, then the side across from it is called the opposite side, and the side adjacent to it or next to it is labeled the adjacent side. Now this is important because if we're graphing the sine function, we're going to be focusing only on the opposite side and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So the sine relationship, the sine of an angle, is equal to the ratio of the lengths of the sides of the opposite to the hypotenuse. All right, that's one piece of background information. Another piece of background information you need is if you're going to be graphing, you're on a coordinate plane. And you know how coordinate planes always have an x value and a y value for their points? Well, when we graph the sine function, we have to relate it to the unit circle. So again, hopefully this is another piece of information that you have a little bit of training on. The unit circle is just the circle that is drawn on a coordinate plane where the center of the circle is at the origin. But the most important piece is that any distance from the origin to the edge of the circle is one unit long. That's why we call it a unit circle. So we will look at four key points on the unit circle. We're going to look at the point on the positive side of the x-axis where its coordinates are 1, 0. We'll look at the point that's on the positive y-axis with coordinates 0, come on and draw, 0, 1. And then a point on the negative x-axis the point where x is negative 1 and the y value is a 0. And lastly, the point on the negative y-axis, where the x is 0 and the y is a negative 1. So we're going to play with those um, key points. But the other piece I've got to bring back into play is that right triangle. So let me throw this on here. I'm going to get rid of this one here for a second. I'm going to point out something. If I were to draw a right triangle on my unit circle, on the coordinate plane and within the unit circle, my right angle is right here, making my hypotenuse be the side across from it. Well, the hypotenuse just so happens to also be a radius of that unit circle, so its length is 1. The reason this is important is because when we start talking about the sine and the cosine functions, we're going to relate the sides of the right triangle to the angle that's formed between the positive x-axis and the sides that form the coordinates of this point. So let's look at this again. If I want to know the coordinates of this point, which you know are x, comma, y, I want to show you how you get those. You go from the origin, write a certain amount, so I'll go write x units, and then I'll go up y units. And the reason this is a big deal is because what I just reminded you about a couple of seconds ago, that when you're in a right triangle and you're looking at an angle, the side that's opposite the right angle, the y is opposite the right angle, when we compare it to the hypotenuse, that happens to be your sine function. So the y value on the unit circle, for any point on the unit circle, is related to the sine of the angle that you are looking at on your unit circle. So let's go generate that graph. Here we go. If I were to draw the unit circle just for reference on my coordinate plane, I'm going to remind myself of those four key points, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start generating a table of values. I always like to graph using a table of values. And my table of values are going to come from where I am on the unit circle at these four points. So if I start at this initial point right here, the angle opening between the x-axis and itself, well, is zero. Now, I could talk about zero degrees, or I could talk about zero radians. Usually when we're talking about the unit circle, we're playing with radians. So I'm going to say, when my x value, now I'm generating a, a, an in-out table now, my x values are going to represent the radian measures as I move around my unit circle. The y values are going to represent the sine of that angle. Okay, and remember I just said the sine of the angle is the y coordinate. So here I go. When my radian measures, I'm going to change colors. When my radian measure is zero, then my y coordinate is zero. Because remember, y coordinate is the sine of the angle. Now I'm going to move around my unit circle like this. I'm going to make a quarter turn. And when I go up to this point right here, I have just created a 90 degree angle, or in radians, we would say that is pi over 2. So at pi over 2 radians, our y value is a 1. Then I'm going to keep moving, starting at the origin again, or starting at the positive x-axis. If I move a half turn, a half turn is 180 degrees, or pi radians. When I go pi radians, my y value the x or the sine of the angle is zero. Keep it on going, three quarters of a turn. Three quarters of a turn is pi and a half. Pi and a half could be represented by three pi over two. So when I've gone three pi over two radians, three pi over two radians, my y coordinate or my y value is a negative one. And then if I made one full turn back to the zero again, that's 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, then my y value again is 0. Now hopefully you noticed the y values in relationship to those angle values. What we're going to do is we're going to plot them on the coordinate plane. Now, the x values, the x values are going to be plotted on my x-axis. I started at 0, and remember my last x value was one full circle. This helps you understand that the sine curve is a cycle, and it moves in a cyclical fashion around a circle. It has a beginning at 0 and an ending at 2 pi. And then hopefully you remember as I talked about going around my circle, I kind of split my circle into fourths. I went a quarter of a turn, a half a turn, three-fourths a turn, and a full turn. So as I say that, I'm going to split up my x-axis into fourths. This will be halfway, or just pi. Then I'll split each one of those into halves. So pi over 2 will be the unit on the x-axis there, and 3 pi over 2 here. And then I plot my y values. And you notice, if you look in the table, all your y values go from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0. So I'm going to put a 1 on my positive y-axis and a negative 1 on my negative y-axis. And then here I go. I'm going to draw my graph. This is the fun part. When x is 0, y is 0. So when I graph x0, y0, that point will be right there. When x is pi over 2, my y coordinate is 1. So I'm going to go up one unit, put a dot. When x is pi, I'm down at negative 1. When x is 3 pi over 2, I just messed that up. When x is pi, we are at 0. Whoopsies. Sorry about that. When x is pi, 3 pi over 2, I'm at negative 1. And when x is 2 pi, I'm back at 0 again. So the sine curve is this fluid, continuous motion, kind of up and down motion. I missed that point, so I'm going to draw it again. That has a maximum at 1, has a minimum at negative 1, and it has zeros every place else. Now, the last thing I want to say is this sine curve is represented by the parent equation y equals the sine of x. Okay, hopefully that helps you.